Hey guys, Mr. Candy back with another video. This is on biogeochemical cycles. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of all these before, but we're going to go over them. Now, biogeochemical cycles, just remember nutrients um, cycles involve both biotic and abiotic factors, so both living and non-living components. And also remember that nutrients continuously cycle, so they go around and around. So nutrients that were here millions of years ago are still here, and energy flows in only one direction. So that is very important. Now, there are actually two categories of uh, biogeochemical cycles. They can either be local, such as phosph phosphorus, potassium, calcium. They basically um, cycle within the local environment themselves. And then there's global ones that are your gases that move throughout the entire atmosphere. Now, the four main nutrient cycles that we're going to talk about are the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and the phosphorus cycle. So first, let's get to the water cycle. Um, the water cycle, the main reason why it's important is that it is essential for every living thing. You know, the main reservoir of water is in the oceans or in uh, land. 97% of all water is found in some liquid form, either in lakes, rivers, oceans, um, and it cycles. You can see how it goes around and around in circle. And the key processes to it are evaporation and transpiration. Where is transpiration? I don't see transpiration. Evapotranspiration. All right, these are the two key processes that drive the, drive the water cycle. Evaporization is when water turns into vapor, goes up into the atmosphere where it condenses and turns back into precipitation. And it comes back down. You know, there is some water that is located as groundwater that eventually seeps out. Um, you have evapotranspiration or transpiration in general, is which the water is leaving from plants, you know, into the atmosphere. Just realize that this is a continuous cycle. Uh, it, it goes around and around. And, you know, the unique thing about it, I, I always comes to my mind, is that the water I drink today might have one day been inside of a dinosaur or may have been also been a beverage that a knight in shining armor once had. So that's kind of what I kind of goes in my mind when I think about the water cycle. The next cycle is the carbon cycle. And the carbon cycle, the, the major reservoir of the carbon cycle is fossil fuels, of course. Uh, the atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide, there is some there too. You know, the key process that drives this carbon cycle is photosynthesis. And why carbon is important to us and why to know that it is, it's a continuous cycle is that carbon is found in every organic compound, right? It's found in every living thing. So if you look in terrestrial, the plants basically take in carbon dioxide and photosynthesis. They turn it into a sugar, which is used, and then humans emit it back into the air so it goes around in a circle in the ocean it's the same way photosynthesis in the ocean also drives it you know photosynthesis do, makes um takes carbon dioxide and makes it into organic compounds which is then used in respiration and it's a continuous cycle the next one is the nitrogen cycle the nitrogen cycle the main reservoir is in the atmosphere okay atmospheric nitrogen is where it's mainly found um the the key driving force in this is nitrogen fixation. Um, I can't seem to find it right here, but nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is when plants take atmospheric nitrogen and turn it into um, nitrites or nitrates that plants can then use. It's a continuous cycle around and around, and it, you know a lot of plants use it. It's a fertilizer, so it helps it grow. The last cycle is the phosphorus cycle, and the phosphorus cycle, the main reservoir is in rocks or in sedimentary rocks, and it goes into the oceans or into streams by erosion or weathering of rock will cause it to go into the water, and plants take this phosphorus up and use it to make different things, uh, and then when they die, they're so basically they recycle it over and over again. Okay, the next thing is when we think about these cycles, they're, they're continuously flowing. Well, humans are constantly causing problems here. Well, we actually have ecosystems that are damaged by humans, by mining, 
or deforestation or over farming, uh, over harvesting or whatever. And people, act, humans actually are responsible for restoring these areas. We do like physical reconstruction where we actually go in and move the dirt and get it back to a place where it can be livable. Uh, we have bioremediation in which we actually add prokaryotes, fungus, plants to detoxify the polluted ecosystems that we have. And then we have even augmentation, biological augmentation, where we add essential elements to the, to the soil to allow for things to grow. You know, this is an example down here at the bottom of a restoration project here in which this was a mining area in 1991, and after it's been reclaimed, here's what it looks like. Realize we're doing this in the rainforest. We're doing this on the coral reefs. Um, you know, so we're doing it throughout the world, restoring it, which is a good thing. All right, I hope this helps you on biogeochemical cycles, and I will talk to you soon.